Hi everyone, this is Sonali. Thank you all for carving out some time for attending today's webinar on the episode 22 of the Business X Learning Series, Invest, Scale, Value and Exit. To all the attendees out there, please type in any questions you might have in the Q&A section and we'll try to answer as many as possible at the end of the session. I would now like to welcome our speaker, Mr. Gaurav Marya, Chairman and Founder of the Franchise India Group. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you, thank you, Sonali, and thank you for hosting another edition with uh, Business X. Uh, this is an edition we started to talk about four things, how to invest, how to value, how to scale, and how to exit your business. This is, I, you know, four aspects which keep coming at different stages uh, in your life journey. Today, uh, I'm going to talk about a very basic topic. We started having these, uh, you know, feedbacks coming from a lot of uh, young investors, uh, people who are now looking to really go out and make a pitch. And, and this is a good timing. Why? Because uh, why this whole COVID, I think, should be passed by next two to three months, uh, at least from a, with the vaccine out. And I think there could be a little bit of comfort for people to really start uh, becoming forthcoming in terms of going out and making, uh, you know, uh, reaching out to people. So this would be also a good time for a lot of startups to now really actively seek investments. And I think India would be in a good situation uh, to attract a lot of capital. A lot of Indian startups would get capital. And don't limit yourself by mindset that you are only going to be going to uh, investors around you. You can reach to any investor anywhere in the world. Uh, but you need to have a very strong, compelling business idea and you will do that. So I'm today going to be in the next 20, 25 minutes going to talk about how do you really make a pitch? How do you go and represent yourself? What are the rules for the representation? What is messaging you really want to go? Because fundamentally is that uh, uh, people don't invest on anything they have, right? Which means that if they have 1,000 pitch coming to them, they might end up investing into 50 of them, maybe less than that. So that's how the ratio would work. So how do you really is one person who's out of that 1,000 which get recognized? And please try to understand that whenever people have made this pitch, you get a very small window, very, very small window for people to buy into you first, buy into your business plan and buy into that this would make money for me. Actually, if you really start, every investor sits with the first fundamental that is going to make money for me. That's the fundamental. But before even he goes to that fundamental and says, this is why I want to invest. Only the reason the investor would look at investing is because he wants to make money on this. But he needs to first buy into these two things independently, which is you and the business part. And I feel that people, a lot of time focus on business model, what they're going to present, their product, how they're going to get in the market. And they don't present on too much focus on themselves. And I feel that that has more meaning to me because in order, they would first have to buy into you and then into business and then really to go on and say, oh, yeah, it makes sense that it can make money. So you need to be very, very particular. So I will give give you about 13 different points, uh, which are very important when you're thinking about pitch. Uh, it's, a, it's a very important aspect, even if you're not pitching, because in franchise India ecosystem and business ecosystem, we also get a lot of people who are now looking to invest into um, you know, uh, existing businesses. Uh, they are going and making deals with uh, franchise businesses. Uh, they are going making deals with licensed businesses and so forth. So wherever you're going, even representing yourself and, and really want to do that. And I can tell you, uh, my first uh, business, which I really got, was uh, a, a four-star hotel, and I was very young. And there was they were had a big nightclub, and which they wanted to really give it to somebody. And they put a lot of investments. And I was, uh, uh, I think, in a in my twenty-four or twenty. Uh, and this club, they would have invested at that time maybe a million dollar uh, in way back in Chandigarh, and it was a four-star hotel which had this club. And say they, I saw an advertisement and saw this advertisement says, uh, we want to have an operator with somebody who can come and take that club and run that club. And I wanted to, obviously, every young 24-year-old wants to run a nightclub. And I had no experience. I had nobody with me. I had no clue what I'm going to do. And I went to meet this owner of this uh, hotel. And he was a little bit uh, rough guy. And he obviously is an owner of this hotel. And and he gave me exactly 10 minutes. And this 10 minutes was very important for me to really go and represent and say why I would be the best operator for this club and how can I turn around and make make sure that everybody who's who of this uh, city really comes there and, and do this and that. And I actually practiced it. And I practiced it so well 
the next day when he gave me a chance and i know a lot of other big restaurant operators were eyeing on this and uh, because it had everything it had licenses it had liquor license it has beautiful setup it has few homes parking everything was right for this place to really be very very successful so a lot of seasoned guy uh, went with a, a little bit of arrogance and because they had uh, they were also very strong they were very popular and i went with the plan i had for that place i never wanted to really talk about what i did because i had nothing to show because i had nothing which was available and i went and what i am going to do this and i think the owner really saw purpose he saw the clear purpose that this guy is not about really what he's done in past and is not very he has all that what he has is this and he's putting every bit into this and he will put his best to break sure this is done other people have plan b plan c plan d he has only plan a and he wants to make this work so sometimes another big starting point is that if you go and somebody and represent that you need to show that this is your only plan and this is what you are putting your best and everything on it when people see that your commitment and see that where you're coming from they value that that's where it really starts so let's get started on the 13 points uh, which are very important first is uh, pitch are normally very short you know and it should be like that because uh, it's a pitch that's what it's called so you don't have to really ask for more time you need to really understand that this is about 10 minutes which you would get with the investor a absolutely peaceful hearing and after that he is not even attentive to what you've done today and and a lot of people want to drag it they want to request for more time they want more elaboration but truth is you have the 10 minutes and 10 minutes is good enough rather i would say if you start a pitch and say uh, i have this next 10 minutes which i'm going to present and you actually finish it in 9 minutes and you're watchful and you train yourself and you practice yourself and do that another thing which you need to do is if a lot of times you say this is what i want to present last that means it's last you don't drag it so i have feel that a lot of people get offended by by you not respecting their time or not really trying to do that or dragging this or putting a too much of focus on emphasis on few things which doesn't make sense maybe making a lot of sense for you and you really want to do this piece i would suggest strongly that don't even bother and i, I and don't make your assumptions sometimes we we try to put overdose of this because we feel that somebody is not giving you that the kind of attention you felt uh, stay there stay calm with your own peace and do whatever best can be done and put your best in that 10 minutes and try to early uh, wrap up the second is <clears throat> turn your pitch into a story you know i feel that people love stories they don't like somebody to coming and telling a uh, very dry uh, sentence if you don't your slides don't bind as a story with each other and the flow and you start with giving a larger reason why you there what is the purpose of this what you want to create and what is the problem it is going to solve and then how you want to solve the problem and finally how this would create value and uh, being it so, so this all should be queued up why you thought about this why it came to you not to anybody else what was the reason and why you strongly believe in this second how you are planned to solve the problem which means that what is your go to market capabilities and how you want to really do that and what it can shift and who would be a potential tomorrow buyer which would come through eventually investor only wants to see this he doesn't want to see the first two right but it should flow it should look like that i am passing through a very very structured road and i can see the end of the tunnel very clearly you can see the end i know a lot of people take them through but they don't take to actually finally show them where it is headed to and there's a little bit of a confusion it's not very clear and especially the biggest point i have realized is that a lot of times it's, uh, it's it's a flow is right but you don't show go to market and go to market is missing and that doesn't come into the story so you need to be a great storyteller how you want to really tell your story and 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 be in that i think third point is be very very laser focused don't go all over uh, don't spend time on things which which makes no sense man uh to anybody uh things which you would have done or things which you would have thought and and things of that nature which is not currently part of the business anymore anything which is not relevant is out of the discussion you have to be extremely focused and stay tight on the discussion itself uh explain what is your product and so or service which you are offering and how this uh, product or service uh would be really uh one uh, what is the proprietary level of that product or the service Uh, how strong you are 
on on the developer side of that product or service which you're trying to do that and what strongly the prop- proposition this product would create in the market or the problem it will solve that's very very clearly should come out and uh, and how definite you are in that product and i can remember that uh, you know sometimes uh, we have seen some some phenomenal uh, funding like look at the case of housing and housing is a great example of a lot of good investors backing that company uh, because the product was strong product was strong execution was extremely poor very very poor execution and the company went into uh, drain and there was a lot of erosion of capital which happened but the product was so compelling the that uh, was very very compelling so a lot of people really chase good products they really chase good product and service uh, that something has to come in and also you need to really be very sure about what is the uniqueness of the product and how you want to really uh, do that people do a lot of comparatives uh, when they think through and whenever you present and why you would be so unique uh, versus anybody in the world and these days uh, <clears throat> there is a very little uh, window left uh, you know and and a margin left even if you have something which is now having parallelly been done in other some part of the market it's not far that it will reach here so innovation is not giving you too much a window now so you really have to think through that how you would show your that your brand and your product is extremely compelling now again the next point is the sixth point is that how you would go and what is your target audience is what exactly is your target audience who is is your audience who's your cust- customers how you you would be able to demonstrate if you have a some kind of a sample size on that then it is even better but you need to really be sharp enough in terms of your target audience i don't like uh, people giving a very wider piece uh, it confuses because then you trying to address and make everybody happy that doesn't work anymore i will say keep it as niche as possible keep it as sharp as possible so that you are able to do that now seventh point is where i would really put my maximum focus and i was i did in 2017 uh, a 20 city road show for startups and i was part of a i used to go every city and i used to involve locally a uh, uh, angel fund so like calcutta we do a calcutta angels and somebody in delhi and then we did a gala in iit in delhi a big big uh, function where we got akshay kumar and other people to come down and and uh, we we gave about the first uh, uh, award of a startup was getting a uh, good reward uh, but i had an opportunity to really go out and do about i think 750 different uh, pitch and uh, i can tell you uh, i was always very impressed by people who who had a great product uh, i still remember uh, uh, you know somebody came in in a you know organic side uh, uh, the clothing and things of that nature so every time i would get very strong product uh, and a very poor go to market capability they would have no idea how this product can go to the market and that's exactly is frustrating to me because uh people spend a lot of time in understanding the product and design and other things and and uh, doing the prototype but they have no clue how they would bring distribution to it and today i think uh, if you're not having strong go to market capability you will not be able to uh, get the results now eighth point is essentially about uh, your revenue model you know how your revenue model would be done and this also is sometimes explained in a very vague structure it's not very clear and uh, how you going to be uh, taking the company what kind of revenues we can expect where the revenues are going to come from why we feel that this channel versus that channel will perform better and all that pieces is very very important the revenue is now particularly these days because startups uh, especially when they're getting early stage investments uh, uh, investors are nervous uh, because they know that if they're not having a right time firm timelines on revenue started flowing in uh, they might be in a danger so you need to really be sure that uh, you are able to not only define it but you are absolutely firm on your on your revenue model now we start on the some of the other aspects which are also equally important because uh, as i said in the initial uh, starting that it's actually a combination of three things which a pitch should do one is buying into you second your business model and third is how can you demonstrate to me that this is going to make money these are only three things which you would need to carry and you need to be very sharp if you've given 10 minutes 3 minutes 3 minutes and 3 minutes uh, that's the game of a pitch so <clears throat> now it, if it is all about you then uh, i would presume that how you really represent yourself how excited and how passionate you are because you cannot fake passion 
and this is something which really comes out you know and uh, most of the times it's not said it's not presented but they would sense it how uh, excited you are uh, how enthusiastic you are about your opportunity or the business you want to get into if that comes in uh, very very clearly then i think uh, the investors are normally very impressed and uh, and to complement that you need to look good you need to dress well you need to represent well and so on so for every smallest thing really works and a lot of people actually counter me that this doesn't work i mean but i tell you it works it works because uh, your personality is your window and anything we do in life uh, there would be something uh, people would really judge out of your personality uh, and we and this can be not dependent on that but uh, our biggest example today and sometimes is criticized also in the uh, social media is our great prime minister uh if you look at him you know i i always have seen him he's a, one of the best dressed man he he carries himself well it's not for fronting and what he can do he can uh, at his position he can do entire thing but he's representing a nation he needs to be very well dressed man he has to be most presentable in the in that acting and there should be no shame on doing it he's doing a duty duty it's his duty to be really rightfully presented he is not representing he's representing one of the powerful economies of the world uh india is going to be and he's headed towards the third largest powerful economy he's not going to represent poverty that's how uh, a lot of people don't understand that so so he's doing the right thing so you need to really represent what you're representing you don't have to be somebody who shies away from doing it so if it means to buy a new suit or a nice jacket or something of that nature you need to do that and you need to really do that and this sometimes we really see in the in now in the culture where sometimes people kids uh, young young people really come uh, and they they sound like they just out of college and they are they are working on something and they are, i think it worries me because i sometimes feel that if he is not looking after himself well how he would look after uh, the company and this was actually one of the companies uh, pitch anil amani long time back said he was used to anil amani was really heavy and very very heavy guy and he went to uh one of the lead investors uh, globally and uh, and likely the investor said to anil amani and said look uh, you not keeping yourself well uh and you're not fit enough and uh, i i hope that you're keeping the company fit and that's where his marathon really started and uh, and that's where his thinking started that if i don't keep myself fit and represented well then how would i want to keep the company right and this used to be a very important evaluation process in yum restaurants and yum restaurants on KFC pizza hut taco bell and things like that in us they used to really visit by by any excuse they would visit the potential franchisee and they would go to his home and see how he is keeping his home because it was very important for them to really see that if somebody is not even keeping his home right how would he keep a restaurant right and and this used to be a certain thing uh, earlier they used to do that now they don't do it because it's it's a, getting into a people's personal life and things of that nature is not so appreciated and that's why they really started sharing that we used to do it not for the purpose of just barging into somebody's home uh, but essentially finding out how you are inclined towards hygiene safe uh, cleanliness and upkeep of your environment and so forth so it's it's one of the important uh, areas needs to be done 11th is practice it just don't overcommit yourself over uh, estimate yourself uh, practice your pitch you need to really go out and practice and then then go out and represent uh plus point is uh, anticipate all the questions beforehand you you cannot be somebody who doesn't answer especially the tough questions right because uh, you always know what tough question can hit you and you always know that people can question you or uh, pull you down on on the numbers or projections or or things of that nature or any kind of platforms you're really doing and not studied them well right so if i come to you and say look i'm going to be how you going to distribute i say i will use uh, uh platforms like amazon to really take my market to the and i think but i don't know how amazon works and and why amazon would do it and what margins i need to shell out and things of that nature if i don't know that in depth then you can be caught you can be caught on areas which you're taking a lot of uh, claims because most of the times you're making projections and claims and say oh this happens and then this would happen and this would happen uh, so if they are not connecting the dots and they are not connecting as we go along then it can be a serious problem and finally show them the exit this is the fundamental this is where the end point is this is cherry on the entire 
be cake. You can build the cake, but you need to really see the cherry. Where is the cherry? And that cherry is show the exit. Clearly tell them that this is where and this timeline this exit would happen. And what is the exit meaning to you? Is is it going to be another investor who will come and acquire the company? Is an acquisition uh, which would be done, or we going to do another round where the uh, lear investors can find the entire thing, or any other answer which you clear is logically available for the kind of investor you got in. and and his appetite also study the investors you going in and understand what they have seen in past their success stories their failures in investments they've done so their success stories would tell you a lot of things in their the way they would have attempted why they would have attempted and if they have really made that if i was an investor and i have really done well in something you already know me very well i think investors are more predictable than uh, entrepreneurs who are pitching actually it's it's other way around you are very very clearly you can predict what this guy is all about you know how he reacts these days uh, like uh, in courts you go the the judge, judges are very predictable because uh, and and all the uh, lawyers senior lawyers who know if this goes to this bench this is a kind of reaction he can have because they have seen the trends in past they have really seen the the trends in past with them uh and that's where they would really change the strategy they know what to highlight what needs to be and I think what we would normally like to hear so do your homework uh do your homework on a lot of things on on your investors which you're going to pitch uh but my message now is that start pitching you know this is a time where you the markets are opening up and if you have a good startup idea and if you have a good model this is a time now uh to start this why we took this as a point because we feel uh in last 6 7 8 months uh the overall <clears throat> you know uh excitement for entrepreneurs to go out and hit uh new investors has gone down and because they don't estimate that this, this is the time where a lot of investment will find i think i can tell you this is all opening up and it will become even more aggressive in the next two quarters so if you have a good brilliant idea and a business model start looking out for for reaching out to investors and start making your pitch Uh, to these investors, Business X also continuously does a lot of these pitching sessions where you can be part of it and you can also use and do that. And if you have any other need from Business X in terms of uh, valuation or help on on uh, you know resales of a business, that also Business X would do. So over to you, Sonali. If you have any questions for me, uh, I will be more than happy to take a couple of minutes more questions and uh, and then we can close this session. Sure. So, thank you so much for another great session, uh, Gorup sir. We have quite a few questions lined up with us, so I'll just take up the first one. Uh, the first question is: If I meet an investor in a networking event or manage to connect with them over a call, is it right to seize the opportunity to pitch my startup idea to them, or a very formal setting like pitch rooms organized by various firms are the right way to go to approach an investor? good question so it depend purely depends on uh the investors mindset at this moment and and uh, i i would say the whole word elevator pitch came from elevator why because you take an opportunity to present in elevator also and uh, so uh, uh, fundamental is that you should never have a problem in terms of uh, when you want to really present you can present any time uh, but don't uh, go into it offends people if you don't take their permission you know so that's something which i'm i'm a strong believer uh, while we all hear this put uh, up i think that people have done elevator pitches and and got this and that piece uh, but these would be uh, 1% of uh, the chances but 99 happened in the board rooms where you were formally presenting so a lot of people actually talk about the odd things that happen in life and they become more popular but actually 99 are are structured pitches and that's what i would have seen right uh, so i would say always take time uh sometimes you are, people are looking on on that subject and they always looking at it and uh, when you throw your elevator pitch and say oh, this is what i do and and uh, i know about you i don't go like strangers you know i was in one of the big event actually my wife was speaking and and she took me along uh, uh is the biggest uh, investment event happens uh, called uh, web summit uh, uh, and uh, and i was uh, not speaking and i was just visiting with her and and uh, i saw a lot of young people coming and just giving me cards and giving me this pieces and i just was collecting and i was felt that why are they just wasting on me because i'm not even here for as investor capacity uh, so <clears throat> but uh, that's something which people do do you don't know me and you just trying to do this piece that doesn't work i i feel that 
you need to do a little bit of intelligence and these days it's much easier you know you know whom to go who invest in where why they would invest what are the past investment then when pitch and very short take his approval and and i see a lot of people in comes to our forums uh when they would get a good idea they would just i would see them sitting in the corner uh with understanding with this idea and want to do that and if they're interested they would call you again right uh, the next question we have is how do social impact startups get funded that is startups which are not specifically highly profitable but exist for a good cause and reason is fundraising a good idea for such startups yeah yes there is a lot of social startups which are there because they are earmarked uh, investments for that and uh, and if there is a cause is good there is a big startup available if you really ask me globally the biggest money is spent for good causes you know and uh, and uh, even in 2021 you will see what what where the money would be budgeted for the from the most successful economies of the world it would be uh, you know climate it would be uh, recycling it will be uh, you know energy uh, saving so lot of these these are monies which are which are long term for human kindness so it's it's fundamental is money follows it but you need to be very careful where you want to really go and pitch that idea uh, but uh, and investors also have a larger cause uh, and they are very clearly mandated to do that some investors uh, have a, a different cause and different investors have different cause right uh the next question is do investors believe unbelievably high financial projections or do they like startups to be realistic realistic absolutely uh and it's not that they believe or not believe or that you need to live with what you present and mistake people do is money raising is a very small part of the cycle if you present unrealistic it's foolishness people do they present unrealistic and so they still get money and that money is actually benchmarked on what you presented and they lose most of the shareholdings and i have seen investors original founders reducing to 2% 3% 5% of their shareholdings because they were unrealistic they they put the future projections and the investors are sharp they would put and hold you for future projections you don't reach that they would change the equation of uh, disproportionately their equity holding and disproportionately equity holding would mean that they would take a larger share holding now in your business and this can really take your company away and a lot of these founders suddenly surprised and that they are not part of the company why because of the projections wrong projections sometimes investors are sharp they are sharks rather so they they actually see between the eyes they know you're claiming hair but your hair this is also good but because you're claiming hair i go with this and if you don't reach there i'll change my share holding proportionate and uh, and that's something which you have to be realistic you need to be realistic you need to really see what you're offering and why if it doesn't happen there what are the circumstances you can get into absolutely uh the next question we have is how should we differentiate our offering from competitors in case our product or service is in itself unique if your product or service is unique then how you compare with competitors yeah so so fundamentally uh, answer is that so your uh, competitor is like for example uh, if i was ola and uh, pitching what would be my competitor my competitor was auto companies who were selling cars and people were using buying cars and using that or my competitor was regular taxi service both were actually my competition because i was in a mobility space i was helping people to go from one destination to another destination that's what my space so sometimes there are direct competition sometimes there is indirect competition right and uh, and what they want to address is on one side they want people to not buy cars and use public community and much more uh, i think and second side they want to really and discourage and so actually if you really ask me ola uh, made a pitch more for that my competition is people not buying cars anymore they should use me i'm more economical and much more safer and much more in comfort and somebody would drive me out and i would have maybe save more money so that was the big pitch and that's why the business became very very big otherwise they would have been another taxi company or any other mobility company which was other company would be so because they chose a bigger competition and showed that this is where where we want to really make a big dent so you need to really see if your product is unique and the difference of uh, what how people consume whatever they consuming are going to shift to you and if you are able to demonstrate that shift then it is an interesting uh, pitch 
Right. Um, another question we have is, is private investment network more useful than IITs or NITs investing in startups? Both are useful depending on uh, uh, where it needs to be done. So if the question is that you need to also bring in the credibility of the investor investing into it, and I think yes, absolutely. Uh, people follow who has invested. Sometimes your business, especially in the early days, has no, not so much a foundation and, and your bouquet of investors uh, uh, would really demonstrate. I also know that some of the investors, because they've done a good PR, uh, they are abusing this situation. Uh, so they go and take uh, equities for just been sitting there and take a very low investment cycle. And then, then the entrepreneur would go and shout everywhere and say, or one of the co-founders of this company is my, my investor and because he was of him, he would be able to attract other investors. This is okay because they sometimes work like a gate openers, but a good genuine investor should not really do it just by your, you have that, uh, your profile. Uh, you should really go for and help these entrepreneurs to really require and help them to mentor to them. If he's bringing mentorship, I can still understand, but just bringing a marquee investor on board it doesn't really, uh, to me, it's making a lot of sense because a lot of uh, bad investments have happened in the last two, three years, particularly uh, with the companies where invested by these marquee investors. Right. Uh, another question we have is, how big should a team be to pitch to an investor for the initial funding round, according to you? Sorry, I just uh, missed your point. Uh, how big should a team be to pitch to an investor for the initial funding round? Team should be core team. Uh, I think if you can just be core team and the core founder, and I think you need to take uh, uh, your own heavy lifting uh, and founders are the main important. Uh, you cannot hide behind the team. You need to be in the front and you need to take the responsibility. Uh, and there are critical areas like technology or other things. You need to have some co-founders along with you who are also committed and being a part of the system for a very long period. And I'll just uh, probably take up the last question for the session. It's a rather long one. So uh, the question is, I have come across a couple of investors for my pitch. They both have shared very different pitch formats and asked us to remake the presentation in the given formats. Now the format they have given states only one slide for multiple subjects like marketing strategy and capital justification. We were ready with a separate presentation for that um, and now are not able to compile all of that in just one slide. Also, they all have a common question for which we are not able to come up with the answer they are looking for. The question is, why should we not dislodge your position from the firm? Yeah, sure. So I think uh, uh, this is uh, uh, happens all the time where somebody would ask for uh, what they would like to hear and what somebody else would like to hear. and. Uh, and uh, this is a difficult proposition, but uh, uh, there is also another thing what you want to tell. So, uh, so while you try to accommodate what they want to hear, uh, but uh, you need to really go out and tell uh, your story uh, and it has to be complete. And I, I know a lot of times uh, you get deviated because somebody wants to hear you something and, uh, and you stick to that part uh, and don't tell the whole, whole picture. It's like somebody wants to really see one side of the painting and doesn't want to see the full painting. And it actually is to me wrong because he might presume that he knows the balance side of it and, and wants to see only this part, uh, which is uh, uh, sometimes can offend somebody and say, I told you only I want to see this, but not this. Uh, but truth is, uh, you want to be smart enough to really show the full painting. So if, you, if you're not getting an opportunity to show that, uh, I, I can tell you without even making I think you will not get there. So you need to really do that. While time is fine, if the argument is that he doesn't have time, that he wants you to do all that one slide. One slide when a person tells you is not that he cannot only want to see second slide or third slide. He has a limited window. He wants to give you five minutes. So you need to be smart enough that you want to use that five minutes creatively to show the full picture. And picture is you, business model, and how he makes money. Three things. If you are not giving these three things very clearly, you, who are you and why you are so important to this business at this moment at least, and how you would get uh, out of that and your position would be redundant as going off forward. This is how you build the enterprise, that's separate from them. But at this stage, you are critical. And your business model and how you he's going to make money. 
Absolutely. Uh, so lastly, sir, we have a few questions from people who are asking us about the process of Business X helping uh, such startups in creating their pitch decks or in uh, helping them reach out to investors. So anything you would like to add on to that? Business X is a platform designed for early stage businesses, uh, ideation stage businesses, young entrepreneurs uh, who are now looking to reach out to potential investors from helping them to create pitch decks, uh, to create their IMs, uh, information memorandums, to create the valuation, uh, to negotiate with the investors. All that pieces are done by uh, Business X. It's the largest platform for early stage businesses. Business X is also a platform which encourages, which helps you to resell your businesses. Say you have a successful business and you want to now resell that business, that also uh, Business X does. Uh, so it's a it's a platform, and if you have any particular queries or anything which you need to do, I'll also put my email ID, and you all can reach me. And uh, obviously Sonali because she is the lead for Business X, and uh, uh, she will be also helping you to uh, do that. So I am at gm at gauravmarya dot com. Thank you so much, Gaurav sir, for another wonderful session and and very patiently answering all our questions like always. It was absolutely wonderful having you here. Anything you would like to say in the end? Only thing which I would say is that uh, we have uh, uh, passed through the most difficult time in in our generation. I think at least uh, I would say uh, in last uh, about 47, 48 years since I am in, I think you know, I have not seen a situation like this. Uh, this is past. Uh, but uh, uh, good times are around the corner. And if you're really uh, having a good idea and a business model, this is your time to really hit out. Don't wait because you will miss out the opportunity what it present to you. Uh, so this would be, the next two quarters would be very, very important. And uh, uh, you need to not miss that opportunity. Uh, so align yourself, compose yourself, and go out and there's a lot of investors out there who are looking to invest on your good idea. Absolutely. Thank you so much once again. And thank you to all our attendees. We really hope we were able to add some value to your life through this session. And we'll see you next time. We have this session every uh, Saturday at 3 o'clock. So please tune in next Saturday at 3. And uh, thank you so much, Gaurav, sir, once again. Thank you very much. Thank you.